part two, special computer times. But yeah, healing work came easily for me. And it was something that, that suddenly I felt like my world made sense. And because there wasn't, at least from what I was discovering, there wasn't like a, a specific standard that was measurable other than, you know, did, did people seem like they got something out of it? Um, and because the only way healing work works, at least in my opinion, is to not have an agenda, that, that it just was something that I kept doing because I enjoyed it and it challenged me in a fun way. Like any client I have, it's not like there's just this protocol that I follow. It's like, hmm, you know, how do I actually meet you? And, and everyone is so unique and, and that's what is exciting for me. And, and that also I didn't have to be good at it. Like I, I, that was the only way I could authentically meet someone else was I had to drop that. And so for, for anyone who's looking for their sole purpose, I think it's, it's dangerous when, if we have that part of us that needs to please others or be successful in a way deemed by society, because we won't ever come from the rawness of ourself. And anyone who I look at that is successful as a human, they're really coming from a joy within and, and a certain driving force that is very intimate. What I say to students in the first couple of days of, of our uh, foundation trainings is, you know, some people would say that yoga is the union with God. And to me, God is a very intimate relationship that in some ways we couldn't define or put into words. And if I get really honest, you know, I, I get to touch my intimate experience with God when I'm, when I'm playing the piano. And I don't actually play for others. It's very rare. It's, it's just something for me that I've, I've kept for me. It's, I've taken out that part of me who can be a perfectionist and an overachiever. You know, that really fucks me up. And if, if you're an overachiever, a perfectionist, that will fuck you up. Because you're, you're never going to succeed. You're always going to be missing the mark because that's the game that we play with ourselves. We always set unrealistic standards that aren't fun and also aren't sustainable. And so I've been really getting honest with where can I let myself just be where I'm feeling that ultimate, that intimate relationship and the thing is, you can't actually script it. And you can't put a formula to it. It's not like, well, if I always play the piano at this time of day, it's going to nail it. It's like, no, like some days it's sitting with myself and I happen to catch the light hitting the water at a certain time. And that's where I feel that intimate space. Or there's just a moment where I'm writing and, and I'm not writing for anyone else and I'm not trying to be good. And then something else takes me over. And, and teaching... You know, I, I, I think that's why I love teaching so much and, and where I really am careful to not teach to make money, you know, even though it's how I make money, that, that I really make sure before I teach any class, like, I'm going to get, I'm going to have some fun with this and I'm going to be open to what really wants to come through and, and what's the surprise. And, and in that space of being open without agenda is where grace comes through. And as I've been owning myself more as an artist and less as a scientist, and that's kind of always been my journey, um, because back in the day, I did really well in the sciences, and I didn't want to be a scientist. Um, I, I wanted to, to me, an, an artist is the science of God, where it's like I can delve in those spaces where people still can't make sense of things, and that we have different kinds of tools that come through that are, you know, metaphorical and metaphysical and multidimensional and and where can I live in those spaces that are a little scary and crazy and and also find a center and a peace and a truth and I find that I, I consider death and sex all the time and and this is the crazy thing like we we don't know when we're gonna go so how do we get to give ourselves life every day. And at least I, I can speak as an American and as a Westerner, there's just so much like I need to produce, I need to save money for the future, I need to be, I need to be good for others, I need to be accepted. And, 
is that actually what gives us joy? Is that really what gets us off? And is that what brings us into contact with what's most important? So these days I'm, I'm saying fuck it even more to appearing a certain way and behaving a certain way and not being honest with, with where that can still drive me and allowing those wild, colorful, maybe even potentially ugly places just to, to come out. Because the, with the masters that I've sat with, they weren't good, they weren't pretty, but they could sit with themselves. And that's, that's where, I don't want to use the word work, because I, I think that being working on ourselves is a neuroses. Self-improvement is a fucking neuroses. But how can we just say, here I am, and here I am, here I am. Have a good day.